Hello, my name is Cody Anderson. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate addition and subtraction uh, in decimal, binary, hexadecimal, and octal. This is my demonstration of learning target 2A. So first, decimal addition. Uh, this is what we know from, uh, from elementary school. 8 plus 4 gives me 12. The base is 10. So I can carry 10 out to the next column, which leaves me with 2 down below. And then now in this column, I have 1 plus 7 is 8, plus 6 is 14. I carry 10 out to the next column, and 4 is left here. And then now 1 plus 5 gives me 6. All right, pretty basic, but this is kind of the foundation for how all other additions work. So it's nice to have that de decimal foundation. Okay, now for decimal subtraction. So 3 minus 5, 3 is smaller than 5, so I'm going to carry in a 1 to make that 13. And that 1 is taken from that 6, which is now a 5. 5 minus 7, again, 5 is smaller than 7, so I'm going to need to carry in 10 from that next column over, which is going to take away 1 from that 8 and make it a 7. So now 13 minus 5 gives me 8. 15 minus 7 also gives me 8, just a coincidence. And then 7 minus 2 gives me 5. All right, now we'll move on to binary addition. 1 plus 1 gives me 2 in decimal, but in binary I'm going to have to write that as 1, 0. And that's going to mean a carry out of a 1 to the next column with a sum bit of zero down below. And then now I have one plus one plus zero is also gonna give me two. And again, I write that with the sum of zero and a carry out of one. And now one plus zero plus zero gives me one. And then finally, there's no carries to this last column. One plus one gives me two, or a sum of zero with a carry out of one, which carries out to nothing else, so that also comes down as part of the final sum. All right, now we have binary subtraction. Okay, this is uh, where it starts to get a little bit tricky, but I just need to follow the same procedure as decimal subtraction before. Okay, zero minus zero just gives me zero. No big deal there. One minus zero gives me one. Zero minus one. Hmm. Okay, the zero is too small. So I'm gonna to need to carry in a, a weight of two, but we write it as a one, a leading one, from, that pre, from the next column over into this column. So by carrying that in, this one becomes a zero. I notice that here I'm gonna have zero minus one again. So let's repeat the procedure. I bring in one from this other column over here. So this guy currently holds a negative one but obviously that's going to need to change. Uh, the negative one is too small to perform the subtraction, so I'm gonna to need to carry in two from the next column over. Uh, two minus one gives me a value of one in that column, and I took that away from this guy, so that one becomes a zero. So now I read this as two minus one is one, two minus one is one, one minus zero is zero, and then zero minus zero is zero. Personally, I don't like longhand binary subtraction. Thank goodness for addition in two's complement form. All right, now let's move to hexadecimal and octal. So hexadecimal works just like decimal addition, but my base is 16 rather than 10. And to help me out, I wrote down this little little cheat sheet over here which tells me which of those hex digits that are bigger than nine correspond to their decimal values. So A is the same as decimal 10, F is the same as decimal 15, and so on. So C plus five, in my brain, I'm thinking of that as 12 plus five gives me 17. 17 is bigger than my base of 16. So I'm gonna carry over a 16 to the next column and that leaves me with one down here as my sum digit in this column. Now I have one plus 11 gives me 12, plus four gives me 16. OK, 
Okay, again, I'm going to have to carry over 16 to the next column, which leaves me with a sum of 0 there. And finally, 1 plus 10 is 11, plus 3 is 14. 14 I write in hex with the character E. There we go. All right, now for some hex subtraction. 4 minus 5. Okay, the 4 is smaller than 5, so I'm going to carry in a 1 from the next column over. But that 1 actually carries a weight of 16. We'll need to remember that when we come back to do the subtraction. 5 minus a, again, the 5 is too small, so let's carry in a 1 from the next column over, which is going to turn this 2 into a 1. And then finally, 1 minus 9, that 1 is too small. So again, we're going to carry in a 1 from the next column over. 14 minus 5 is 9. Wrong. This is hex 1, 4, which in decimal would be 16 plus 4 or 20. So this actually tells me 20 minus 5 is 15. I know that the hex digit for 15 is F. 1, 5 in hex is actually 21 in decimal. 21 minus 10 gives me 11, and I write 11 as a B. 1, 1, that would be 17 in hex minus 9. 17 minus 9 is 8. And finally, C minus nothing gives me C. And then the very last examples for octal. So it's going to work very similar, but I need to remember that the base is 8. So the highest digit I could write is a 7. So here I see 7 plus 3 would give me decimal 10, but I need to split that up into its octal components. An 8, its base, plus a 2. So that 8 gets carried over to the next column, and the 2 is left down here. 1 plus 6 is 7. 7 plus 1 is 8. Again, I need to carry out an 8, which leaves me with 0 right there. And then finally, 1 plus 5 is 6, plus 1 is 7. No need for a carry in that case. And for the very last example, octal subtraction. 5 is smaller than 7. Let's carry in a value of 8 from the next column over. So I write that with a leading 1. Remember, this is not 15. That leading 1 carries a weight of 8. 2 minus 1, we're going to be okay there. 7 minus 4, we're going to be okay there. So I don't need to worry about any more carries. So this is 8 plus 5. So octal 1, 5 would be the same as decimal 13. And then I'm subtracting 7 from that. So that leaves me with a 6 here. 2 minus 1 gives me 1, 7 minus 4 gives me 3, and then lastly, 2 minus nothing gives me 2. All right, that's it for my demonstration of addition and subtraction in these four number bases.